Yo, what's going on everybody? Alright, this is the day two of the Kuala Lumpur trip uh, vlog day two. So uh, right now I am heading to, down, to the downstairs of the hotel at level six. We're going to proceed to have our breakfast. And then after that, um, later on, we're going to we're gonna see how we're going to go first. It's either we go to KL Tower first or Batu Kibis because I usually will go to Menara KL first because um, the place is very near here actually because we're at Raja Chulan uh, area here. Uh, Burden Hill is quite close to Raja Chulan uh, L MRT. So we're going to proceed to Menara KL first. If Menara KL still hasn't opened, at about 10 plus, then we can proceed to Batu Caves by Grab. So, let's go for our breakfast. Okay guys, I understand that my plate of nasi lemak with the rest is not much but i will get some more food and there's a lot of breakfast around here so i recently got some pancakes and some apple crumble you know and also there's nasi lemak there's a lot of things going on here yeah so it's like a very good option of breakfast around further hill hotel so as you can see from my plate here i don't have um, so much of things going on like it's just i need to like you know have some and then have some of that but I have some of the nasi lemak so I try to have a little bit less so that I can taste every bit of everything so it's, so it's actually about pretty much it alright guys right here got some sausage first I'm gonna try mm. and of course what you can see from my plate over here I have some nasi lemak right and also there's also the prata dal and roast peels and sausage and right here we have us pancakes with some apple crumble. Right, it's black. Mm. I wish there's chicken together with, together with the nasi lemak, but they don't have. So they just have you know peanuts, rice, anchovies, and sambal. So that's pretty much it. But I would say the spi the sambal is very spicy, but I don't mind because I love spicy food. You know. Mm. Some elements in the nasi lemak over here We don't have the chicken but the sausage kind of make it up for it which is good And right here, for the toast to be toast So, we try mm. Let me say this eh The roast potatoes here Actually much more seasoned than the ones that the Ken Rogers that I ate yesterday <laughs> but, it's really nice. It's sweet. It's slightly crunchy, but not as crunchy as I would like it to be. But it's still pretty nice, I guess. Not gonna lie. Way better than yesterday's roast potatoes that I had from Kenny Rogers. Next one will be the prata with dal. Alright. So normally in normally here in Malaysia they call it roti canai, but some place I don't know why they call it prata. Uh, usually in Singapore we call it prata lah, but that's how it is. So here we try. Mm. The dal is very nice. Usually when I was young, I don't really eat dal. I would, you know, I would pass, yeah, I would go for the curry instead. But actually dal started to become my favorite when I was, when I started to become an adult. Lah. So what I have over here is, I have some um, roasted, roasted chicken. I have some uh, stir fried vegetables and also some vegetable fried rice. And of course, we have an omelette, alright. Alright, so this is a uh, nasi, the nasi goreng vegetable. We try. You must be the fried rice that I mean I always used to make. That's how it is, uh. <laughs> Alright, so next thing is the omelette. Have some chili sauce on the side. Okay, let's go try. So it's not this omelette I get from. Uh, from from that chef who actually made it on the spot, so got some different types of um, new things going on. There's, there's tomatoes, there's onions, there's it's a little bit of everything inside lah for the omelette. Lastly, we have this uh, roasted chicken right here. Yeah, so let's give it a try. It, very good flavor, but however, it's pretty dry lah. Still got my orange juice right here. Oh. 
Right, we're done. Let's go. Guys, you want to know something? When you when you walk around here at KL, when you go to traffic, right? You have to be super careful because here the traffic is like no holes bar, you know. Almost like there's no rules to it, you know. They can just knock your even if it's a green, even if it's a green um, pedestrian light, they still will dash you out of nowhere. So you have to be super careful when you come here. Alright guys, right near me is the Kuala Lumpur Tower, also known as KL Tower. It is actually the 15th storey telecommunication tower here in Kuala Lumpur. And the height of this uh, tower is at 420.7 meter tall. And it's also ranked number 7 tallest tower in the world. Or should I say tallest monument or tallest building in the world. You can literally see this building everywhere. Even if you go to a shopping mall, you can even see it there. So yeah, later on, we're going to proceed to the observation tower. Uh, we're not going to go to the sky deck. So I don't really have much time to go to the sky deck later on. So I'm just going to go to the observation tower and see how the view is going to be like. We're going to proceed to the observation deck right now. Okay. All right, guys. This is the kit. This is the upside down house. So it is the newest tourist attraction here in KL Tower and also in Malaysia as well. And this is actually known as the cottage house, lah. Basically, so it is something new that I never seen before. And the place looks so dope, lah, guys. It was a ten out of ten experience, I tell you. And you can take, you can literally take a picture, and you can just. Take it like you are in upside down, then you rotate it and make it like as if your picture is that you are upside down of this place. So cool. Guys, if you guys want to go to KL, you guys should visit this place called Upside Down House. And it's the newest attraction here in KL Tower and also in Kuala Lumpur. Lah. So if you guys want to check out this place, come to KL Tower first. Then once you go to KL Tower, it's just downstairs where is the entrance is. You can see the upside down house. Yeah, it's it's worth to go. I'm not even kidding. It costs only 19 ringgit or about 24 ringgit per person. Yeah, so it's it's a must to go for everyone. Uh. Not gonna lie. All right, guys. So after we went to the upside down house, finally we need to we are going to Batu Caves next. Okay, so. Just gonna wait for the grab, then we're gonna proceed to Batu Caves. Right. What's going on guys? Alright, so right here we are in the Batu Caves. This is actually one of the biggest tourist attractions in Malaysia. And you can see from on top the stairs, there's a total of 272 stairs counted from top from bottom to top insane guys and this is actually one of the biggest i would say one of the biggest um, tourist attraction ever in malaysia and also this place is very is known for the pilgrimage for the tamil hindus here in malaysia Alright guys, I'm halfway through climbing up to this part of I'm not kidding, it's very tiring. Eh? It's 270 steps guys. Not sure if I can make it on top, but let's do this guys. Uh, 
Alright guys, we finally made it to the top of the Patu Caves. I would say the experience of climbing up is just ridiculous. You want to know something? I usually go to gym or go to jogging, right? Today I don't need to go at any gym or whatsoever. Eh? I can just go here and work out. Just by climbing up the stairs, 272 steps. It's crazy, right, guys. Alright guys, why I'm here is that I'm here at the uh, Masjid Jamek uh, LRT and right behind me is the Masjid Sultan Abu Samad Mosque It's the, one of the oldest mosques in Kuala Lumpur, I would say in Malaysia and it's built in 1909 So if you guys were to go to Kuala Lumpur, this is the best place to go for, uh, for scenery or maybe go for praying uh, This is the best place to go Alright guys, right, right behind me is the Dataran Merdeka so, this only happens during the Independence Day in August. So every time, it's, it's the same as what in Singapore is, the, uh, the Padang, where the National Gallery in front of it. And it's pretty much the same thing, just that this is in Malaysia. So Dataran Merdeka is right behind me. This is the Dataran Merdeka. And right here is the Parade Square where they conduct the National Day uh, celebration in Malaysia. So the Hari Kebangsaan in Malaysia. Alright guys, I'm here with my friend Julia here who is from Malaysia so he, she brings me around to the places that I've never been before or maybe places that I've long time never been before so thanks to her, shout out to her for bringing me around alright? Alright. Alright guys, we're here at the Kuala Lumpur City Gallery so if on, in order for you to come in, you need to register it alright? So I don't have a Malaysia uh, telephone number so I decided to ask my friend here who has the, uh, um, the telephone, her telephone number uh, in Kuala Lumpur to register using her name lah alright so thanks to her lah Once we went to the Colombo City Gallery, there is this cafe, so we decided to go here and have a lunch. We decided, wanted to go lunch at the Masi India, but I guess uh, it's a bit too late, but it's like a late lunch for me. Lah. So uh, we're going to see what this is going on about. Yeah, it's a more of a Western kind of food, but I don't mind that. You know, I'm just going to here to explore some uh, good places and interests. But at the same time, I feel like I should try something new around here as well. Alright guys, we're here at the Masjid India shopping area. So this place is actually the most busiest uh, shopping district ever in Kuala Lumpur. And if you go here, you will see a lot of stuff. In front of me is the Masjid India. So this, this mosque is built in 1983 and the structure is made with wood. Right, it's a wooden structure. So everything you see here, it's all made with wood. Insane guys. Alright guys, going to Masjid India is now done. Uh, places of interest, I would say, is done as well. So, right now we're going back to Kibitang. We're gonna proceed to Pavilion. I've been there since 2009, so let's check it out. What's going on, guys? Alright, so um, right now I'm at the Pavilion. Uh, I didn't get to film but I just being all the way to Puti Bintang, I was so tired. I just feel pretty exhausted the entire day walking around. So just gonna walk around this uh, mall. Lah. Okay guys, I'm here at the pavilion. So pavilion opened on to, in the year 2007 when I was only 12 years old. And this is the most famous shopping district in Bukit Bintang and also in, in Kuala Lumpur as well. Alright, so this place is very famous and known for the shopping district, I would say. So 
guys if you guys don't know when you come to malaysia right and you come to the places like you know uh, food republic often times you will see a lot of people going there and there's going to be very busy it's going to be a lot of people very packed so if you're going to go there you need to go at least after um after time about seven o'clock at least must be there because if you come at eight o'clock surely it can be a lot of people so yeah right now before i hit the hotel right i need to buy some drinks uh, right in the sun. i don't know where 7-eleven i'm gonna buy lah you know today i didn't de I decide not to go to the food uh, food court and eat there but instead i'm just gonna take away and then just gonna eat at a hotel room lah and of course around kl lah yeah so this is the day two ending for the vlog for kl so tomorrow we'll go for day three and the final day then that's it we're going back to singapore